perfect. All right, everybody, what is going on? How y'all doing? Welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk. This is the show we cover the swag inside and out, and I'm your tour guide around the swag. See what's coming at you, and it is week 10, man. We are in November, first weekend of November, separation Saturdays for the West Division start to start this week. Uh, from here on out, man, this is a playoff, play, kind of a playoff to make it to the West Division title. Uh, to take on Florida a and in the SWAC championship game, which most likely will be held at Bragg Stadium uh, in Tallahassee. So we are going to march from this point on to the to the finish line of the regular season. We have four Saturdays left. Uh, this season is o almost over, y'all, man. It feels like it just got started. Um, I mean, obviously, if you if you follow certain teams, man, it's been such a roller coaster. It's been such uh, um, such a interesting season, to say the least. Um, it seems like it just started, honestly, man, and it's almost over. And I, you know, I honestly, I hate that feeling. Um, that football moves so fast, and hell, we got basketball starting tonight, and uh, it really starting this week in terms of exhibition games, and the regular season starts right around the corner. So we are like in the mix of everything, man. And it's you know, no, October's gone now, November's here. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the into these games. But before we do that, man, y'all check out the socials. Uh, Facebook is Swag Talk, Twitter Swag Talk, 76, Instagram Swag Talk. Have all our uh, our show schedules on there. Um, obviously, uh, Wednesdays are our weekly previews. Thursdays are Swag Smoke Live, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Sunday is our Week 10 Recap. And uh, Tuesday will be our Top 10 uh, heading into Week 11 and our Point Spread Show. And then our Week 11 preview will be coming next Wednesday. So. As you see, we got the full slate, um, and, our, and our, always the possibility of a video dropping here and there, depending on what happens. Uh, we had our we had our um, fixing Southern offense video drop on Monday, so those kind of things always be dropping um, here and there. I'm uh, gonna probably try to talk a little basketball in the meantime, in between time, but right now um, it's all football all the time. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel um, as, as you uh, check this video out if you haven't done so already. And we over one, uh, we over eleven hundred subscribers. So once you go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, like the video, share it, and comment your thoughts on week on week ten, man. You know uh, who's gonna win the West? You know it can it be won this week? Um, it's a good possibility, but it, it, it won't be completely wrapped up yet with the winner of us of our game of the week. But though that team will take a good step forward. Um, and also don't forget, you know, if you like to. Um, Join the channel as a member. You can hit that button and, and become a member and, and join. Also, if you would like to support the show in other ways, you can hit the cash app, dollar sign Squack Talk, and uh, support the show in, the, in that way. So let's go ahead and get started, man. We got a lot to cover. Uh, six games. This, I think, is the, fi the final week of the season where every team is in action in conference play um, because I think next week um, we, we have a couple of teams off next week. And we have a non-conference game. So um, after that, it's, um, it, it's, it's, it's the, the stretch run. So we have a Thursday night game this week. Um, and this is a game between two teams fighting to not finish last. Uh, Valley takes on Bethune-Cookman. That's a 6 p 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time kickoff on ESPNU. Uh, so make sure y'all check that out. Uh, we're going to definitely talk about that as it's going on when we do Swag Smoke. So definitely going to. I want to catch our thoughts on why the game's going on. Uh, Valley comes into this game at one and seven, one and four overall. Um, they they are on a two game losing streak after beating Pine Bluff um, to break a five game losing streak. So they you know they they they've, they've um, sandwiched their win around a bunch of losses. 
Um, they're averaging 12.6 points per game, uh, 28 points allowed for the defense. Uh, the offense is averaging 101 yards on the ground on 2.9 yards per carry with six touchdowns. They are passing for 143 yards per game with six touchdowns and six interceptions. Uh, total offense, um, 245 yards per game, 3.8 yards per play. Uh, de uh, defensively, they give up 177 yards on the ground and 5.5 uh, yards per play with 12 touchdowns. The opponents pass for 227 per game through the air, 16 touchdowns, five interceptions, uh, 404 yards per game um, all for the defense, um, allowing all opponents gain uh, 404 yards per game. Total offense, 6.4 yards per play. Uh, Valley averages um, 30 uh, yards per punt. And they convert 26% on third down, 45% on 46% on fourth down. The opponents 40% on third on third down and 35% on fourth down. So they've been really good on stopping teams when they get to fourth down, but they have had struggles of actually getting teams to fourth down. Um, so they they uh, have had the problems um, with defense. Uh, the opponents have six fumbles to go with um, five five interceptions, giving them 11 turnovers. Uh, Valley has four fumbles to go with six interceptions to give them 10 turnovers. So they are plus one in the turnover margin, which is always a good thing. You know, you want to try to come out ahead in, in that as much as you can. Um, it doesn't always equal wins, but, hey, you want to take care of the football. Uh, Valley has 10 sacks, and their O-line has, um, has allowed 34 sacks. So they have had a really, really rough time with protecting the quarterback, and a lot of that comes from having so many new guys on the O-line um, new quarterback, you know, just, you know, new schemes and systems. They just haven't really been able to protect the quarterback well at all. And they haven't been able to generate much pressure either. Um, they are uh, 11 of 15 in the red zone, and uh, the opponents are 27 of 36 in the red zone. Individually, Valley is led by uh, Jared Wilson on the ground with 325 yards and two touchdowns, three and a half yards per carry. The Fabian Fant could be a guy to look out for in this game. He's a big a big play guy. He averages 12.3 yards per carry, uh, 221 yards uh, yards rushing with only 18 carries and two touchdowns with a longer 53. So he could be a difference maker in a game like this. Um, a guy who can bust a big play um, is going to probably be a, a, a big factor in these kind of games between two teams who are kind of dog fighting to not finish last. Uh, Tajarian Williams has taken the starting job. Uh, he's 94 of 150 for uh, 869 yards, four touchdowns, four interceptions. Had a really good game against Pine Bluff the last two weeks against Jackson State and Alcorn. They made him look more like a freshman. Um, but then cooking his defense, they're going to be aggressive and they're probably going to put some pressure on him. Uh, but, the, you know, the talent level between those two defenses and that defense is kind of different. So he may be able to, you know, make some things happen in that game. But um, he's growing on the job, and, you know, as long as they hold on to him, he can be a solid guy for them moving in the future. Uh, Carrick Ross and Jackson Davis both lead the team with 24 catches. Uh, Ross has 218 yards, Davis 204. Uh, they both average around eight and a half, nine yards per catch, and they both have two touchdowns. Uh, Kobe Bates averages 11 yards per catch, and um, it, Rashad Edies averages 12. So they don't really have a lot of guys who can beat you deep. They they play more horizontally than vert vertically, um, and that they kind of they kind of nickel and dime down the field um, if they can if they can move the ball you know they kind of nickel and dime their way down the field. Uh, Jaron Fox leads the defense with 58 tackles. Um, he also has six and a half tackles for loss to lead the defense, and um, Ryan Quinney has two and a half sacks to lead the defense. Uh, interceptions. Uh, Omar Emans leads with two. Uh, Alexander Davis averages 35 and a half yards per punt. Uh, Anthony Turnage is three or five on field goals. Uh, Davis is one of four. So the team is four of nine on field goals with a long of 44. They have had one kick blocked uh, in the return game. Uh, Kobe Bates averages 4.6 yards per punt return. And he leads the team with 18.2 uh, yards on kickoff returns with 10 returns for 182 yards with a long of 48. Uh, Kobe Chambers has a 60-yard return, but he hasn't had a lot of action uh, returning returning kicks this season. Moving over to um, the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman, 
this is a team who's been in a lot of games. You know, they they they've played some tight games um, for the most part. Um, the last two weeks they've lost by double digits, but those games they they weren't totally out of them. Um, against Gramlin, they didn't really generate a lot of offense. They got a 77 yard uh, scoop and score and a uh, um, 53 yard, 58 yard touchdown run. So you know, a couple big plays, but not a lot of other offense there. Um, yeah, so they're kind of up and down, just like Valley right now. They're one and seven and zero and five. So they looking to get their first swag win here. Um, otherwise, the opportunities for swag wins are getting slimmer and slimmer. Um, they average eighteen point one points per game. Uh, they give up thirty point one points per game. Uh, they average ninety one and a half yards on the ground, two point six yards per carry, one hundred and forty yards through the air, uh, seven touchdowns, seven interceptions, and they've played like four or five quarterbacks, so they have yet to really get a rhythm with a guy. Um, Luke Sprague had been the guy, but Talik Bethea got to start last week. Um, and Walter Simmons came in as well. So uh, I don't know if Sprague has re-injured his shoulder or if they just, you know, if he just didn't go that week. They still haven't found that guy. Um, they averaged 232 yards um, total offense, 3.6 yards per play. Uh, the defense gives up 180 yards on the ground, 4.8 yards per carry. They've given up 20 touchdowns on the ground. The opponents throw for 210 per game. Seven touchdowns, five interceptions, 391 yards of total offense, six yards per play. Uh, the Wildcats average uh, 33 yards per punt. They convert 29% on third down. So this is a battle of two teams who have not been able to convert on third down um, at all, but they convert 64% on fourth down. And they're pretty aggressive on fourth downs. Uh, they've gone for it 17 times. Um, so they're, they're not scared to go for it on fourth down if they're, you know, if they're in a decent position. The defense has only given up 31% on third down, so they've been a solid defense with getting stops on third down, but they've given up 60% on fourth down. So sometimes those drives that they get a stop on, they extend them a little bit, and they, you know that kind of hurts you. But their defense has been playing pretty solid uh, for the most part. Not a star-studded defense, not a you know not a great defense, but a really uh, manageable, serviceable defense that guys get after you. Um, they make they make a lot of plays. Um, as a team, honestly, uh, eight eight fumbles for Bethune Cookman and seven interceptions, giving them fifteen turnovers, uh, five turnovers uh, through the air for the opponents, and five fumbles, giving them ten. So they're minus five. So turnovers have really plagued this team a lot. That's been probably their biggest biggest Achilles' heel this season is turnovers. Um, because they don't really get penalized that much. Um, so turnovers have really killed them in all of their games. Um, they are uh. They have 15 sacks as a defense, and they've given up 31. So another team, just like Valley, who has struggled to protect the quarterback, and a lot of that is because this team is new. You know, the quarterbacks are, you know, inconsistent. They, you know, they're not having the same guy play back there on the offensive line. The backs, you know, the pass protection is, is not always where you need it to be uh, because a lot of guys are, are still, you know, figuring their roles out. Uh, they're 15 or 17 in the red zone, and the opponents are 25 of 30 in the red zone. Individually, uh, Jimmy Robinson leads the team with 284 yards rushing, uh, 3.2 yards per carry, and two touchdowns. Uh, this team doesn't have a lot of big runs. Uh, before that team board run against Gramlin for 58 yards, the longest run on the season was 25 yards. So they don't have a lot of explosive guys in the run game. Uh, Jimmy Robinson's a, a guy. He's not the biggest guy, but he's kind of a grinder. You know, he's not really going to bust it on you. But he, he, he's a guy who can kind of grind out those yards. And before you know it, if he keeps his head down, he can have 100 yards. Um, they don't really have that big play guy um, as, as of yet. Um, they, I'm sure they have somebody, but they haven't, you know, haven't really broken out. Uh, Luke Sprague is the leading passer. Uh, he's 62 or 95, 544 yards, four touchdowns, two interceptions. Also, Walter Simmons, 50 of 92, uh, two, 387 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Talik Patel, who played, who got the start last week, he was 22. He's 22 of 49, uh, one touchdown, two interceptions, 195 yards. So they, like I said, they they play quite a few quarterbacks, and they, you know, they haven't really found a rhythm with anybody yet. Uh, Dakari Allen Johnson leads the team with 27 catches for 226 yards and uh, three touchdowns. Also, Tink Boyd has 21 catches for 200, 213 yards. And uh, the uh, the Vino Ellerton has 20 catches for 198, 182 yards. Uh, 
they again just like the running game they don't have a lot of explosive plays through the air uh their longest passes have been 43 and 40 yards uh, other than that they have a 38 yarder and then a couple of 20 uh 27 and 29 so not a not an explosive offense just like valley so i don't know if you're going to see a lot of big plays even with the defenses being what they are um you know it's going to be tough for that uh Darius johnson has 71 tackles on the season also has a uh, nine sacks uh eddie walls leads the defense with nine and a half i mean um thomas has nine tackles for loss uh walls has nine and a half tackles for loss to lead the defense and he also leads the defense with three and a half sacks and conroy cunningham has three sacks um this season uh omari hill robinson leads the team with two interceptions uh the punt game uh they average 39 yards per punt um on the season um they are four of seven on field goals with a longer 45 um they've been pretty solid um in in in, in from 40 plus they've been pretty solid two or three um, from 40 to 49 yards a uh, return game the Kari allen johnson averages four and a half yards per kick return um Darnell Dees is obviously the guy to look out for in the kick return game. Both teams have solid return guys. I mean, they haven't really broken one for a touchdown yet, but the possibility is there in this game. Uh, I think uh, Darnell Dees returned a kick for a touchdown against Valley last season. Um, he's averaging 24 yards per kick return uh, with a longer 60, 61. Allen, uh, Allen Johnson has a 31.6 a yard average on three returns with a longer 45. This, this game is going to be... I don't, I don't, I, you know, it's probably not going to be the most interesting game. And it's honestly one of the games, you know, I'm surprised that it's a Thursday night game. Um, Valley's taking the bus. So they, you know, they had to leave like on Tuesday um, to get there. Um, so they, how they, you know, how are they going to be, you know, with limited time on a short week uh, coming off of a road trip to, to Alcorn. Um, this is a, you know, this is going to be an ugly game. And I don't think it's going to be a, a site for, you know, for, for, for sore eyes, I guess. You know, it, this is going to just be one of those games where neither team, I think, is going to take control of it. I think Bethune Cookman wins this one because they're at home uh, by a score of 19 to 16. Uh, moving on to our Saturday games, Florida A&M is at Alabama A&M in the A&M Bowl. That's a 1 p.m. kick uh, on ESPN+. Plus. Radliffs have wrapped up the West, wrapped up the East Division, so um, they're, they're playing out the string. You know, they have this game, they have Lincoln next week, and Bethune Cookman in the Florida Classic. So. They, you know, they're they're trying to finish the season um without you know without losing any other games, finishing conference play at eight and zero. So this is still an important game. Um, you know how how hard you know some people have talked about resting guys. You know I don't really believe in that. Not not saying that you know if you get a lead you don't pull your guys, but you know you want to keep your guys sharp. You know and 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 keep playing because you don't want to take a risk of dropping a game. You know in any situation. Um, the Rattlers average 29 points per game. They give up 15, uh, 134 yards on the ground, 4.6 yards per carry, uh, 259 through the air, 17 touchdowns, eight interceptions, and 394 yards of offense uh, per game, 6.2 yards per play. The offense played really, really well against um, Prairie View last week. I think that was the most complete game that this team has played this season. So I look for them to build on that. Uh, nine, 95 and a half yards on the ground for the opponents, 2.8 yards per carry, 178 yards through the air, 12 touchdowns, six interceptions, and 273 yards of total offense, 4.3 yards per play. Uh, the Rattlers convert 42% on third down and 50% on fourth down, so they're really good at keeping their drives going. Uh, the defense gives up 27% on third down and 54% on fourth down. It's really hard to move the ball on this defense consistently. They may give up a play here and there. They may give up a drive here and there. But it, to consistently do it enough to beat this team, that's been an issue for everybody that they played this season. So that's why they're the top team in the league. They have a really, you know, really solid offense. Haven't been the most consistent, but they have the ability to hurt you through the air or on the ground. Um, the defense is very stout. Uh, special teams is good. So this is probably the most complete team in the league this season. Um, they have eight interceptions and uh, five fumbles, giving them 13 turnovers. The defense has six interceptions and four fumble recoveries, giving them 10. So they are a plus. Um, they are plus three in turnovers, so they 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 do really well in that margin. They have 24 sacks on the season. They really rush. They really get to the quarterback well with not a lot of um, blitzes and things, but they they get they get to the quarterback and um, they have given up 14 sacks. Excuse me, they have given up 10 sacks. 
the offensive line is probably the best offensive line in the league, so they do a great job of protecting Musa and keeping him upright. Uh, they are 22 of 28 in the red zone. The opponents are 12 of 18. Uh, they're led on the ground by Terrell Jennings. He has 337 yards on the season, 5.6 yards per carry, five touchdowns. Kelvin Dean, 273, five and a half yards per carry, two touchdowns. Jaquez Yant, uh, 255 yards, 4.1 yards per carry, two touchdowns. So they that's a three-headed monster, and any one of those guys can get loose um, if they decide they really want to run the football. Uh, this team is more of a passing team. They've thrown the ball 275 times on the season, and they ran at 244. So not a big, big difference um, in, in terms of run play versus pass play, but you know they really want to throw the ball more than they want to run it, but they will run it if they if they can. Uh, Musa, 154, 269, uh, 2,021 yards, 17 touchdowns, seven interceptions. Uh, when he goes to the air, Jamari Shreves is top target, 36 catches, uh, 391 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Marcus Riley, 24 uh, catches, 367 yards, three touchdowns. Kamari Young, 17 for 276 and a touchdown. Nicholas Dixon and Jamari Gassett have both come on late this season, 14 catches for Dixon, 19 for Gassett. Uh, three touchdowns for Gassett, two for Dixon. Uh, they're led on defense by Isaiah Major with uh, 20, 68 tackles and 10 tackles for loss. Uh, Anthony Dunn has 10 and a half tackles for loss and seven and a half sacks to lead the defense. Uh, interceptions, all their interceptions are spread out amongst the team. Uh, Trey Wilholt averages 43 yards per punt. And Cameron Gillis is seven of nine on field goals. So as usual, special teams are, are solid. Uh, Sharif is a great punt returner, averaging 15 yards per return. And uh, Riley is averaging 30 yards per kick return, and he has a touchdown on the season. So they, you know, they have the ability to break a big play, which is another factor um, in making this team such a solid team and making them tough to beat because they can get that extra yardage to help their offense out if they, you know, if they can spring a big a big return. Uh, A&M is a team who I'm I'm looking I'm looking at them really tough this season uh this week because um uh, coming off of that magic city loss you know it was a tough loss um can they respond knowing that their their title hopes went out the window with that game um i kind of felt like they may have had a little bit of a, an edge coming into this game if they had won that game not saying they would have beat family but i think they may have had a little bit of an edge so now i'm looking more at how they respond to that game against a great team like family but the bulldogs are averaging 31 points per game um they're Rushing for 154 yards per game, 4.4 yards per carry, uh, 226 through the air, uh, 15 touchdowns, eight interceptions, and 360 yards on the uh, total offense, 5.7 yards per play. Uh, the opponents, 125 on the ground, uh, 3.6 yards per carry, 214 through the air, 13 touchdowns, eight interceptions, and 339 yards of total offense, 5.3 yards per play. Bulldogs convert 41% on third down and 41 percent on fourth down so that, that's as balanced as you get uh 35 percent for the opponents on third down and 14 percent on fourth down so this defense has been um underrated this season you know that's one of the things that i really said i would love to see them improve on is defense and they've been a really solid defensive unit this season don't give up a lot of third downs don't give up much on fourth down um they're pretty solid they have eight uh fumbles and eight interceptions, giving them 16 turnovers. The opponents also have 16 turnovers, so they're even in the turnover margin. Uh, they have 15 sacks. The opponents have 10. Um, they protect the quarterback pretty well, uh, haven't really generated a lot of pressure, but they're 27 to 33 in the red zone. The opponents 25 or 35. Individually, uh, Donovan Eaglin uh, has 448 yards and four touchdowns, 5.1 yards per carry. Ryan Morrow. 387 and five touchdowns, 5.4 yards per carry. And also Xavier Langford, uh, 301 yards, 5.8 yards per carry and five touchdowns. Uh, so they have multiple guys that can run the ball, which can help in a game like this against a defense that's going to really be tough against the run. Uh, Langford uh, has started the last couple of weeks. He's 79 of 140 uh, for 901 yards, eight touchdowns, five interceptions. Also Quincy Casey, 867 of 107. 869 yards, seven touchdowns, and two interceptions. Uh, when they go to the air, Cameron Young is the main guy, 39 catches, uh, 890 yards, three touchdowns. Um, Terrell Gardner, 23 catches, 311 yards, and three touchdowns. Keenan Hambrick, 18 for 304 and two touchdowns. Jacoby, Hew Jacoby Hewitt, uh, 20 catches for 287 yards and three touchdowns. 
Uh, defensively, Jordan Mitchell has 46 tackles to lead the team. Marvin Smith has 45. Uh, and Zarion Hayes has 10 tackles for loss uh, to lead the defense, and he also has three and a half sacks to lead the defense. Uh, interceptions, Imari Pate has three interceptions. Caleb Dawson has two. Uh, they average uh, 40 yards per punt on the season. Um, Austin McCready averages 43 as the main punter. Uh, Victor Barbosa is five of eight on field goal. Was well, team is five of eight on a field goal with a longer twenty nine. So they don't really kick a lot of field goals outside of twenty to twenty nine yards. Um, they only have two field goals from forty to forty nine yards and one from fifty plus. So they don't kick a lot of field goals um, if they're not inside twenty nine yards um, of of uh, twenty nine yard range. Uh, Gardner averages eighteen yards per punt with one touchdown. And um, he also averages 24 yards on kick returns. So he they have a solid return game. And like I said, having a guy that's already broke, broken a punt return for a touchdown, you know, that that's that's a weapon that that's that can be a big factor in a game like this. But my like I said, my concern with this team is mentally, can they pick themselves back up after you know seeing their you know their slim hopes dashed and losing a rivalry game at that. Um, in, in the fashion that they lost it. So I don't know if they're going to be able to respond as well, but I think, fam, you coming off of winning that, that winning the division, I think they have a, 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 a renewed burst. They don't have to worry about looking over their shoulder and they can just play play ball. So I think, fam, you wins this game 30 to 14. I think it's going to be a tight game for a while, similar to most games with fam, you, but they're going to pull it out at the end um, and get the win. Uh, next game is Texas Southern at Jackson State. This is an interesting game because TSU, um, two of their conference games, they they had leads by double digits in the fourth quarter, and they lost them both. Um, that game against Southern last week, I still don't know how they lost that game. Um, they they really lost focus in the last eight minutes of the game with a bad turnover and then just a horrible couple possessions after that. Um, they they just you know they they have the talent offensively they have the talent their defense played probably their best game of the season last week so can they build on that um can can they get the keep the run game going um and can the passing game kind of complement the run game we'll see but the offense is averaging 23 points per game the defense gives a 36 uh, they're running for 191 yards per game which leads the conference 5.3 yards per carry uh they pass for 171 yards per game 11 touchdowns, six interceptions, 362 yards total offense, 5.8 yards per play. Uh, the opponents, uh, 195 yards on the ground, 4.3 yards per carry, 200 yards per game through the air for the opponents, 16 touchdowns, four interceptions, 396 total offense for the opponents, uh, 5.4 yards per play. Uh, the Tigers convert 37% on third down, 33% on fourth down. Uh, the opponents 45% on third down and 58% on fourth down. Like I said, this defense last week played totally opposite of their numbers. So you, you're kind of hoping that they make a, a big change. Uh, penalties have hurt this team. They, they average 86 yards per game on penalties with 72. They had 16 penalties last week, so that's definitely something you want to clean up. Uh, they have six uh, fumbles and eight, six interceptions, giving them 12 turnovers. Uh, they forced four fumble recoveries. and um, Four, four interceptions, giving them eight turnovers, takeaways. Uh, they're minus four in the turnover margin. Uh, they have 20, 20 sacks on the season and giving up 16. Um, they're 17 and 23 in the red zone. The opponents are 34 and 38. Individually, Ladarius Owens is the leading rusher in the conference. Um, he aver He's averaging 118 yards per game on the season, 949 yards, uh, five touchdowns, averages 7.1 yards per carry. And he carried the ball 36 times last week. So they, you know, they're not scared to put the ball in his hands. And he's also a solid return man. So um, he's definitely a guy to, to keep. Kenny, you know, he had a pretty solid game against JSU a couple of years ago. Can he do it again? You know, that that's going to be the key. Also, Ja'Cory Howard uh, has 283 yards and four touchdowns uh, on the season. Jace Wilson, 94 of 169, 1,020 yards, seven touchdowns, three interceptions. Uh, Quake, uh, Jaron Johnson leads the team with 31 catches for 319 yards and three touchdowns. Quay Davis, 26 for 281 and one touchdown. Also, Trenton Leary has come on strong the last couple of weeks with 12 catches for 155 yards and one touchdown. Jacob Williams leads this defense with 77 tackles, 
Um, he also has 15 and a half tackles for loss and seven and a half sacks. So he's definitely going to be the guy to look out for on this defense. Xavier Player has two interceptions. Uh, special teams, they average 37 yards per punt, and they are eight of 14 on field goals with a long of 41. Um, they've been kind of erratic on field goals, but um, as long as they're inside 30, uh, 39 yards, 39 yards in, they are uh, six of eight. So uh, if they have to kick longer field goals, they struggle, but um, they can be pretty solid in, in short range field goals. Uh, Leary averages 17 yards per punt return. Ladarius Owens is the main kickoff return guy since Lewis has been out. Um, Lou, uh, Owens averages 25 yards per kick return with a longer 49. Uh, JSU has played really well these last couple weeks against uh, Valley and Pine Bluff. Uh, Jacoby and Morgan has taken over the quarterback job, and he's been playing pretty well. Um, the offense seems to have a little bit more of a spark. Um, the defense has been playing solid, so they're playing well at the right time. Um, and they have a good opportunity to wrap up this season at 8-3, and three, which is not bad um, at all considering the newness of this team. But they're averaging 29 points per game. Uh, they're giving up 26 points per game. They run for 161 yards per game on the ground, 4.3 yards per carry. They pass for 243 through the air, uh, 16 touchdowns, three interceptions. Total offense, 404 yards of offense, 5.8 yards per play. Uh, the opponents run for 150 yards per game, 4.6 yards per carry, uh, 186 through the air, 11 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. 336 yards of offense for the opponents, 5.4 yards per play. Uh, they convert 36% on third down and 71% on fourth down. Uh, an opponent's 33% on third down and 60% on fourth down. Uh, they have six interceptions, six fumbles and three interceptions, giving them nine turnovers. Uh, they have 11 interceptions, which is uh, almost tops in the nation, and five fumbles, giving them 16 turnovers. So they are plus seven in the turnover margin, and that's been a big factor in this, in this season for them. Uh, turn, being able to turn teams over and get the ball back for your offense, even when the offense isn't playing well. The defense is not as dominant as they were the last couple of years, but they're still a solid unit, and um, they do a great job of forcing turnovers. Uh, they have 17 sacks as a defense. They've given up 22. Uh, they are 21 to 29 in the red zone, 24 or 32 for the opponents. Uh, individually, uh, they're, they're still led in rushing by Irv Mulligan with 668 yards, but uh, Miller, Moultrie, and Martin, the three M's, um, they, they all have over 100 yards rushing uh, this season. Uh, Miller has two touchdowns. I mean, Moultrie has two touchdowns. Miller has one. Uh, Miller is averaging 6.1 yards per carry, and uh, Mulligan is averaging 5.6 with five touchdowns. Like I said, um, Jacoby and Morgan, the last couple weeks, has been really, really good. He's had uh, five touchdowns on the season and one interception, 27 to 37, 367 yards. Uh, Jason Brown is 125 or 196, 1,357 yards, eight touchdowns, two interceptions. Um, Fabian McCray has really come on really strong this late this late portion of the season. He has 25 catches for 385 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Rico Powers, 25 catches, 385 yards as well, and two touchdowns. Uh, Duke Miller, 23 for 223, uh, no touchdowns. DJ Stevens, three touchdowns last week. Uh, 14 catches, 184 yards, and those, and four touchdowns on the season. Uh, they're led by Isaac Peppers with 52 tackles on the season. Uh, also has nine tackles for loss. And Antonio Doyle has three and a half sacks. Uh, Jaheim Hazel has three interceptions. Tim Stewart and Ke uh, Kevrick Wiggins each have two interceptions apiece. Uh, the special teams unit, like I said, man, has been all over the place this season. But Matt Noel averages 44 yards per kick. Um, they are a nine of 11 on field goals on the season um, as they battled a lot of injury, but they seem to have right, right at the ship there uh, in that aspect. Uh, Seven McGee averages 16 yards per punt return on three returns and Rico Powers averages 18 uh, yards per return on 11 returns. Isaiah Spencer, five returns for an uh, average of 33 yards with a 45 yard return. So this game to me, um, JSU, should win this game. I think TSU is going to be a competitive team. Um, they are, are they going to have any lingering effects from letting the game slip away from them last week? Because that was a game, you know, they they there's no there's really no way they should have lost that game last week. Um, they they let it get away from them, and you know I, I don't know if that's going to linger on them 
Uh, they played as well as you can play and not win a game. I mean, it's hard to play that well and lose. So um, it can you know can they put that behind them and and kind of move forward against a JSU team who is finding their stride now? Um, now that some of the, the the pressure is off, they can kind of play and grow. Um, Jacoby and Morgan, like I said, has been a really good quarterback, and I think they're gonna JSU is gonna test Texas on the defense like most offenses have tested their defense and stretched them and, and, and really had success. Uh, I look for the Darius. I want to have a big game in the, in the game on the ground. Um, is he going to be enough to carry this team to a victory? He's going to have to get into the end zone. They're going to have to you know, not have the careless plays that they had last week, which was part of the reason why they couldn't put the game away. They just could never take advantage once they got the ball in scoring position. Um, but I like JSU in this game by a score of uh, 27 to 20. I think it's going to be a tight game. I think it's going to come down to a, late, uh, a score probably mid-fourth quarter. Uh, TSU going to gonna fight, and the offense is going to keep them in the game. But I think um, I think JSU pulls this one out. Our next game is uh, Prairie View taking on UAPB. It's homecoming at Prairie View. That's a 2 o'clock kick. This is the HBCU Go game of the week, so make sure y'all check that out. Um, Big game there. Um, Pine Bluff, I don't even know what to really say about this team right now. They they are really struggling at this point. Um, you know, they played pretty solid early in the season. Um, now they're kind of looking more like what you kind of expected them to look like. Um, the offense isn't playing that well. The defense isn't playing that well. And they're just trying to make something happen. They're averaging 13 points per game. They're giving up 32. Um, they're running for 126 yards per game, 3.3 yards per carry. Uh, they're they're passing for 169 on the season, nine touchdowns, five interceptions, 296 yards of total offense, uh, 4.6 yards per play. Uh, the opponents 190 on the ground, 4.9 yards per carry, 265 through the air for the opponents, uh, 19 touchdowns, four interceptions, 455 yards of offense for the opponents, 6.8 yards per play. Uh, they're converting 27% on third down and 40, 41% on fourth down, so they can't really stay on the field. Uh, the opponents are 44% on third down, only 11% on fourth down, but they haven't you know, had to go for it that much, only nine attempts for the opponents on fourth down. So they pretty much get to third down and they convert and they keep moving. Uh, they have nine fumbles on the season. The Golden Lions do to go with uh, five interceptions. That's 14 turnovers. Uh, the opponents have four interceptions and six turnovers. So. They're a minus four in turnover margin. Uh, they have 18 sacks. They've given up 32, just like Valley and Bethune Cookman. These teams, these new teams, uh, you know, these first year coaches with new, all new teams, they're giving up a lot of pressure on their quarterbacks. And just like those two teams, they haven't really had a consistent quarterback. So, you know, they're giving up 32 sacks on the season. Um, and like I said, they have 14, I mean, have 18 on the season uh, as a defense. They're 11 of 21 in the red zone. The opponents are 26 of 30. Uh, their leading rusher is uh, Jonas Davis with 343 yards on the season, five yards per carry, one touchdown. Kirsten Rogers, 185 yards and one touchdown, averages 5.6 yards per carry. Uh, B.J. Curry, 173, 5.2 yards per carry and one touchdown. It's almost a rolling of, of the dice to figure out who's the quarterback on this team week by week. Uh, Chancellor Edwards has started the last few games. Uh, he's 45 of 75 for 364 yards and three touchdowns, one interception. Makai Higgins, 28 of 59, 317, two touchdowns, three interceptions. Also, uh, Jalen Macon, uh, 61 of 92, uh, 634 yards uh, passing, four touchdowns, one interception. They go to Kenji Lewis um, when they do throw the ball. He has 26 catches for 351 yards and two touchdowns. Maurice Lloyd has 15 catches, 167 yards. And uh, Damon Dawkins has 20 catches for 158 yards. Defensively, Rico Dozier leads the defense with 96 tackles. Uh, he's all over the place on his defense. Khalil Arnold, six and a half tackles for loss. And four sacks leads the team in both categories. And Kyrie Williams has uh, two interceptions to lead the team. Uh, they're averaging 38 yards per punt. And they are two of seven on field goals. So they have not been a good team. In, in terms of scoring the ball, whether it's touchdowns or, or, or field goals. And that's why they average um, 13 points per game. They just can't get any points. Uh, they average two and a half yards per punt return with a longer 12 on the season. 
Um, Maurice Lloyd averages 23 yards per kick return, with along with 34. Also, Donald Johnson averages 22 yards per kick return um, on the season. Uh, Prairie View, I think this is the perfect game for Prairie View coming off of, you know, the loss to FAMU. And, you know, they've been such an up-and-down team. They're playing an, an offense and a defense that should help them uh, get right at least for one week um, and keep them in the divisional race. Um, but the Panthers' offense is only averaging 16 points per game. Um, the defense is giving up 36. They average 152 yards on the ground, which is way down from last season. Um, they have 3.8 yards per carry. Uh, they average 178 through the air, six touchdowns, eight interceptions, and 200, uh, 331 yards of offense as a total offense with 5.3 yards per play. Uh, the opponents average 150 yards on the ground, 4.7 yards per carry. 279 through the air, 23 touchdowns and seven interceptions, and uh, 429 yards of offense for the opponents, uh, 6.7 yards per play. The Panthers convert 36% on third down, 30% on fourth down. The opponents convert 40% on third down and 75% on fourth down, so they have not been able to stop anybody uh, from driving the ball down the field. They have four turnovers uh, due to fumbles and eight interceptions, giving them 12 turnovers. The opponents have seven interceptions and three turnovers, giving them three fumbles, giving them 10 turnovers. So they are uh, minus two in the turnover margin. Um, they have 11 sacks on the season. They've given them 22, which is kind of surprising because I thought the O-line would be one of the top lines in the, in the conference, but they've struggled protecting the quarterback this season. Uh, they're 14 to 20 in the red zone, 29 to 33 for the opponents in the red zone. Uh, individually, Amar Antoine leads the defense uh, with 376 yards and two touchdowns, 5.1 yards per carry. Also, uh, Caleb Johnson, uh, 316 yards on the season, 4.1 yards per carry and one touchdown. Uh, Trezon Conley is 94 of 173, eight, six touchdowns, eight interceptions, 1,374 yards on the season, only completing 54% of his passes. So they've been really, really struggling offensively. Uh, Trajan Spiller, 20 catches, 324 yards, and four touchdowns. Also, Brian Jenkins, 15 catches, 299 yards on the season um, for the Panthers. Uh, Keyshawn Johnson leads the defense with 56 tackles. Uh, Derek Ray has seven tackles for loss. And Jamal Marshall has three sacks to lead the defense. Uh, the interceptions are spread out amongst every, amongst a few guys on the team. Uh, they uh, they uh, average 37 yards per punt return. And they are 8 of 12 on field goals with a long of 50. So they do have a, a guy with a leg that can knock one through if they need to. Uh, Jenkins averages 5 yards per kick per punt return. And he averages 24 yards per kick return with a long of 43. This game should be a get, like I said, this should be a get right game for uh, for Prairie View, at least for one week. Because I feel like Palm Bluff is just not playing well um, this season. Uh, they, they started off pretty decently, but they faded so much. Um, as the season has gone on, and I think they're going to continue that. They can't stop the run, which is something that Prairie View really tries to do. Um, and they struggle against the pass, so Prairie View should be able to move the ball. I think Prairie View defense should be able to hold down Palm Bluff offense um, because they're juggling quarterbacks, and you know that running game has been banged up. So I like Prairie View winning this game by a score of 35-12. to 12. Um, Our next game is Alabama State and Grambling playing in Mobile in the Port City Classic. Uh, that's a 4 p.m. kick. Um, this obviously the key story is Miles Crawley. Um, he played at Alabama State, now he's at Gremlin, so you know that's always something to kind of look at. Um, when you see you know guys going team to team and they play against the old team, um, is he gonna be able to stay focused? Um, or is he gonna try to make a lot happen? We'll, we'll see. But Gremlin's offense has averages, averages 30 points per game, but their defense gives up 32. So they've given up as much as they've scored. And you're going to have to win shootouts when you play Grambling. Um, the offense averages 160 yards on the ground, four and a half yards per carry. Uh, they are 220 yards through the air, 12 touchdowns, five interceptions, 380 yards of offense per game, 5.7 yards per play. The opponents average 194 on the ground, 4.8 yards per carry, uh, 190 through the air for the opponents, 15 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Uh, 384 total offense for the opponents, 5.8 yards per play. Uh, Gremlin is 38% on third down, 60% on fourth down. The opponents 40% on third down and 56% on fourth down. So that's one of the reasons why the defense gives us so much yardage. They can't really get off the field when they need to. 
Uh, they have, like I said, they have five interceptions and five fumbles, giving them 10 turnovers. The opponent, six fumbles and 10 interceptions, which Gremlin has done a great job of, of forcing turnovers. So they are uh, plus six in the turnover margin. Uh, one of the few teams with a really high turnover, uh, positive turnover margin. Um, they have 18 sacks as a defense. They've only given up eight sacks as an offensive line. They've done a great job protecting Miles Crowley. Um, their offensive line was really, really young last season, and they've grown a lot. I don't think they are. I, I think, you know, when people talk Gramlin offense, you know, they talk the running game, which is, you know, which is valid, and they talk the passing game, which is valid again. But the offensive line doesn't get anywhere near the credit that they should, and only giving up eight sacks um, this season. It, 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 eight sacks in eight games, man, that's tremendous number. That's only one sack per game. Um, you keep your quarterback clean, you go, you're going to be able to hit big plays, and you're also opening holes for your running back. So I applaud Gramlin's offensive line for, for the plays that they've been making um, and, and keeping the quarterback upright. Uh, 30 of 35 in the red zone for the Tigers, 23 of 25 for the opponents. Uh, they're led by Chance Williams, um, Deuce Williams, as I like to call him, uh, 637 yards of rushing, six yards per carry, six touchdowns. Uh, Floyd Chalk has 449 yards, 4.8 yards per carry, and seven touchdowns. Like I said, Crowley, 139 of 239, 1,725 yards, 12 touchdowns, and five interceptions. Uh, Antonio Jones, 32 catches, 486 yards, and one touchdown. Uh, Lyndon Rash, 29 catches, 336 yards, and six touchdowns. Uh, defensively, Lewis Matthews leads the team with 75 tackles. Uh, Sunday out of Anderson has 11 tackles for loss. He had a big game last week um, against Bethune-Cookman. Uh, Anderson also has four and a half sacks to lead the defense. Javon Carter has three and a half. Uh, Trent Henry has three interceptions. Cedric Anderson has two. Their special teams have been really good this season. They average 40 yards per punt. And uh, they're seven of 11 on field goals with a longer 38. Uh, the return game. They average, uh, they ha uh, average 23 yards per return for Joshua Johnson on four returns uh, with a long of 47. And uh, Joshua Johnson also averages 24.6 yards on kick returns with a long of 77. So that's a guy with the potential to break to break a return um, at any moment. And both teams have that in the, in this game. Um, when you look at and when you look at Bama State, they have a really good return unit as well. Um, and they, they, you know, they they had a really great special team game against Alabama and them last week. The Hornets are a defensive team. I mean, their offense plays, you know, in fits and starts. They're not as bad as they were at the beginning of the season, but they're still a work in progress. Um, but their defense is, is tremendous. Um, and their defense, if you can get them 21, 25 points, um, they, you should win the bulk of those games because the defense is going to make it hard for everybody. But right now, the offense is averaging 19 points per game. They're giving up 18. Um, they average 115 yards on the ground, three and a half yards per carry, 182 yards of offense for the uh, for the Hornets through the air, seven touchdowns, seven interceptions, 297 yards total offense, 5.2 yards per play. The opponents average 98 yards on the ground, 3.1 yard per carry, uh, 218 through the air for the opponents, eight touchdowns, five interceptions. 317 yards of offense uh, per game, 4.7 yards per play. The Hornets convert 30% on third down, 37% on fourth down. As you can see, they struggle to um, move the ball. You know, consistently, they, they don't do that very often. 32% uh, for the opponents on third down, 76% on fourth down. Uh, the Hornets have 12 turnovers. The opponents have uh, 13, so they have plus one on the season. They have 18 sacks of the defense, and they've only given up nine, nine sacks. So uh, just like I said, Gramlin did a great job of protecting the quarterback. As much as we fuss about Bama State's offense, they protect the quarterback pretty well, and they play two different types of guys. So that O-line was a real problem last season, and they're a bit better this season. So I salute both offensive lines for keeping their quarterbacks clean through this season, um, especially Bama State with the struggles they've had offensively. Uh, they are 15 to 21 in the red zone, 14 to 19 for the opponents. Uh, they're led on the ground by Jawan Howell with 302 yards and one touchdown, averaging 4.3 yards per carry. Uh, right now, Damon Stewart is 66 of 108 through the air, uh, 850 yards, three touchdowns, four interceptions. Also, Demetrius Davis, 42 of 61, three touchdowns, three interceptions, 413 yards. The passing game starts and ends with Keyshawn Johnson. 
He has 39 catches on the season, 553 yards and four touchdowns uh, with a long of 63. Isaiah Scott's the only other guy with double-digit catches with 14 for 190 and one touchdown. He's also the only guy with more than 100 yards in receiving. And he's uh, one of only two other guys who has a touchdown catch on the season. So it's either Johnson or Buss. So they're going to have to find somebody else to step up and help this passing game continue to thrive. Uh, Bubba Adams has 86 tackles on the season. He also has nine and a half tackles for loss to lead the defense. Uh, Traquan Thomas leads the defense with five sacks. And uh, he, they have, the interceptions are spread out amongst uh, a bunch of guys. Uh, they average 36 yards per punt return, per punt, per punt, excuse me. Uh, and the field goal kicking has been erratic. They're six of 12 um, on the season, six of seven from 20 to 29 yards. Uh, anything longer than that, they haven't made one. Uh, that long on the season is 29, and they've and they've um had uh they've had three they've blocked three kicks as a team. So that's definitely something to keep an eye out on, including one that they took for a touchdown last week. Robert McMahon is a big time punt returner. He returned a touchdown last week. He's averaging 16 yards per punt return with a long of 48. Uh, he averages 19 yards on kick on kickoff returns, and Eric Horn averages 19 yards per kick return with a longer 59. This is going to be a fun game, man. The Gremlin offense against the Bama State defense is the is the battle you want to watch. Uh, but I, like I say in a lot of games, the battle between the units that aren't the best is probably what's going to win this game. Um, I think I think Bama State defense is going to win this game for them. Um, I, I mean, stop me if you heard that before. Gremlin, I think they're going to force Gremlin to, to have to move the ball against them. I think they're going to force some mistakes. And they're gonna give the offense some short fields, and that's how they're gonna score. Um, I think I think Bama State wins this game by score twenty two to twenty one. Um, if Gramlin cannot turn the ball over and 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 hit those big plays um, and get that running game going against a stingy stingy defense, um, then the Tigers do have a great chance of winning this game. But I, I like Bama State because their defense um, is, is is really really solid, and I think the offense is, has been opportunistic the last couple of weeks, and the special teams was solid. Uh, in, in previous games, and I think that can help them as well. Um, our final game, which is our game of the week, um, Southern and Alcorn play in Alcorn at, in Norman, Mississippi on the reservation, 2 o'clock kick. Uh, this game is for first place in the West. It doesn't win the division for either team, but it really puts you in a great spot. Uh, these two teams have really good defenses. Alcorn's offense is has been getting better week by week. Uh, Southern's offense has been erratic week by week. And last week was Southern's worst offensive effort of the season, um, especially through the air. They have to be able to fix that this week. Um, otherwise, I think Alcorn wins this game going away. But Southern's averaging 23 points uh, per game. Uh, offense, they're giving up 16, uh, 100, 121 yards on the ground for Southern, 3.3, 3.6 yards per carry. The defense, 113 yards per game. 3.1 yards per carry. Put an asterisk by that 113. Um, TSU had 303 in the in in their game, so they were able to find something that worked. Um, but they just weren't able to score points in that game. So if you're all coin, you you, you want to see what TSU did and attack that way, um, and, and see can you have that same success? Because I feel like if all coin runs the ball well, they're gonna win it. Uh, because I think their offense is a little bit more consistent. Um, Southern. Passes the ball for uh, opponents pass for um, 191 on the season, nine touchdowns, three interceptions, 304 yards of total offense for the opponents, 4.4 yards per play. Southern 215 yards through the air, uh, 10 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Interceptions have been a huge problem for Southern turnovers, period. Uh, 337 total offense for the Jags, 5.4 yards per play. Um, they convert 34% on third down, 43% on fourth down. Uh, the opponents 38% on third down, 40% on fourth down. The, the numbers are on the conversions look really bad for Southern um, as a defense, but um, they find a way to get those crucial stops, um, and that's been the key for the season. Uh, Southern has 17 turnovers. The opponents have 14, so Southern's a minus three. Turnovers and penalties have killed Southern, in, in, in even their wins, turnovers and penalties have been detrimental to them. Uh, they have 20 sacks on the defense. They're giving up 26, and a lot of those have come from the quarterback taking unnecessary sacks. You know, I think I think they take a few too many sacks when they could throw the ball away, but 
that you know that happens. Uh, Southern's 15 of 20 in the red zone. The opponents are 14 of 20. Uh, Kendrick Grimes lead the, leads the rushing attack with 463 yards, averaging 6.3 yards per carry and five touchdowns. Uh, he averaged 12 yards per carry last week on 11 carries, so he's definitely a home run hitter. Uh, Gary Qualls, 389 yards on 4.2 yards per carry with three touchdowns. Uh, Harold Blood has been going, his, his, his performance has been going down week by week. Uh, last week was easily his worst performance of the season. He's 122 of 215, uh, 10 touchdowns, eight interceptions, 1,646 yards, completing 56% of his passes. Um, Chandler Whitfield, 13 catches for 197 yards and a touchdown. August Pete, 18 for 185 and two touchdowns. Uh, Kendrick Rhymes has 20 catches to lead the team with 168 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, defensively, Jalen Campbell has 55 tackles. Um, he missed last week's game, so we'll see if he's available. Um, this week, uh, Derek Williams has 48 tackles. Uh, Kelby Givens has been a really, really key unit, a key part on the defensive line. He has 13 tackles for loss, uh, six sacks on the, on, the, on the season. Also has a fumble return for a touchdown. Uh, the special teams has been great for Southern. They've had some hiccups here and now, like a couple of missed extra points against FAMU. Um, that caused them uh, a couple of missed extra points against FAMU and a fumble punt return. Um, you know, other than that, this special teams unit has been really, really good. Uh, Southern averages 42 yards per punt, and they are uh, seven of 10 uh, in the in, in field goals with a longer 54, which they hit last week uh, to um, to send the game in overtime. The return game has been, you know, hit, hit hit or miss. I mean, they do have some guys who can break some some return, but they haven't really done it. Uh, Whitfield averages 19 yards per punt return. Uh, Jalen Howard had a big 44-yard return last week to put Southern in good position. Uh, he averaged 36 yards per kickoff return. Alcorn comes into this game um, on a roll. They're playing. They're playing really solid football um, since Swag players started. Um, they've won four games and uh, they won. They won uh, three games in a row since they beat. Uh, since they lost to Prairie View, um, they are really hot right now. Um, they're averaging 20 points per game, 20 and a half. They're giving up 19.7. Uh, the running game has been getting better as the season's gone on. 154 yards on the ground, 4.7 yards per carry. Uh, the 193 through the air, nine touchdowns, five interceptions. They um, average 347 total offense, uh, 5.8 yards per play. The defense gives up 136 yards on the ground, 3.9 yards per carry. Uh, uh, seven touchdowns and 11 interceptions on the season, 181 yards of offense through the air for the opponents, 317 total offense, 5.1 yards per play. Alcorn converts 37% on third down, 54%, excuse me, on fourth down. Opponents 35% on third down, 75, 72% on fourth down. They've only fumbled the ball four times and only lost two, so they take care of the ball pretty well on uh, seven turnovers on the season. Uh, the opponents have turned the ball over 17 times, so they're plus 10. That's the best turnover margin in, in the conference. So they take care of the ball, and they force a lot of turnovers. So it's, that's why you see why this team is playing a lot better um, this season. They have 21 sacks as a defense. They've given up 14. Uh, they're 19 of 23 uh, in the red zone, 20 of 25 for the opponents. Javrion Howard has 534 yards. And five touchdowns on the season, 5.2 yards per carry. Uh, Jacorian Sewell uh, had 92 yards last week, giving him 170 on the season, 7.1 yards per carry, and one touchdown. Also, Nico Duffy, 157 yards on the ground and one touchdown. Aaron Allen has been really consistent um, these last few weeks. He's 140 of 210 for 1,518, 1,518 yards, nine touchdowns, three interceptions. Uh, Montario Hunt, 30 catches, 448 yards, and one touchdown. Malik Rogers, 19 for uh, 358 and one touchdown. Tavarius Griffin, 19 catches, 186 yards and three touchdowns. The Terrence Ellis leads the defense with 72 tackles. Uh, Malachi Bailey, 10 tackles for loss. Bailey also has six and a half sacks. And uh, McDaniel has three interceptions. McKelton has two. Special teams has been solid. They average 36 yards per punt. And they're 9 of 13 on field goals with a long of 42. Uh, return game hasn't really, really done much. Uh, they average 2.8 yards per punt return. Uh, they average 16.2 uh, yards per kick return. 
Akeem McNair leads the team with 18.1 yards on six kick returns. Uh, Nico Duffy, 15.2 on seven returns. They have a long of 43. So not not a lot of big plays through the unending return game. But this is a solid team, man. They're playing really well right now. Uh, both teams are are pretty hot. You know, they're both on, on winning streaks. Um, and they're both sitting at four and one in the in the in the conference. So um a lot there's a lot on the line here. All coins won four straight, Southern's won three straight. Uh, Southern offense scares the hell out of me, man. You know, like I I I I, I try to remain optimistic that the offense will get better week by week, but they've started to kind of decline. Can they turn that around against a really good all corn defense when they couldn't do it against a TSU defense that had been porous all season? I don't know. I think Southern defense and special teams are going to keep them in this game, but I feel like the turnovers and penalties that the offense has is going to hold Southern back. Um, I think Alcorn, they're playing really well, man. I, I think they can feel that, that turnaround coming and getting back to that winning momentum that they had in previous years. Um, I think Alcorn wins this game by a score of 24 to 20. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be a, a, a electric atmosphere. Campus is going to be full. Stadium probably going to be full. It's going to be a crazy game, um, but I think Alcorn finds a way to win it um, late, 24-20. And that's going to do it for our show. Man, I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in and rocking with us, and we'll catch y'all tomorrow uh, on Swag Smoke, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, um, as we talk about week 9 and week 10. So we'll catch y'all on the rebound. Peace. <laughs>